Welcome to this service of morning prayer. If you're joining us for the first time, a good and special warm welcome to you. And if you'd like to follow the liturgy, if you just click on uh, the link in the description below, or you can access an app on uh, one of your mobile devices, uh, Church of England app for morning prayer, or evening prayer even. So welcome, and it's, I'm so pleased you could join us. Uh, so let's begin this service together. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. praise. And a prayer of thanksgiving. God be gracious to us and bless us, and to make his face shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O oh, let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you would judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. If you haven't already guessed it, we're here again in uh, Calvary Parish Church uh, Churchyard, and it's uh, lovely and peaceful and serene, and the weather is good, it's fair. So, the psalm today is Psalm 78. It's the second longest psalm in the Bible after Psalm 119. And this psalm is, um, I'm not going to read it all, you'll be pleased to know. Um, it, it's a, a reminder to us of uh, God's goodness, uh, despite his people rebelling against him. This was, of course, uh, in Old Testament times. Um, and really I think it's a reminder for us today so I'm, I'm just going to read down I think it's to verse um, let me see verse uh, 11 and then I'm going to read odd verses after that I mean if you can find it I'm sure you can in your Bible you'll be able to pick it up um, but it's just uh I think it's speaking to us today, it's speaking to the world today. So here we go. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will pour forth mysteries from of old, such as we have heard and known, which our forebears have told us. We will not hide from their children, but will recount to generations to come the praises of the Lord and his power and the wonderful works he has done. He laid a solemn charge on Jacob and made it a law in Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children, which they still do to this day, the Jewish nation, that the generations to come might know and the children yet unborn that they turn might tell it to their children so that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God but keep his commandments and not be like thy forebears a stubborn and rebellious generation a generation whose heart was not steadfast and whose spirit was not faithful to God the people of Ephraim, armed with the bow, turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God and refused to walk in the law. They forgot what he had done and the wonders he had shown them. 
I'm going to read some odd verses now from that psalm, verse 17. Yet for all this, they sinned more and more against him and defied the Most High in the wilderness. They tested God in their hearts and demanded food for their craving. But for all this, they sinned yet more and put no faith in his wonderful works. Their heart was not steadfast towards him, neither were they faithful to his covenant. But he was so merciful that he forgave their misdeeds and did not destroy them. Many a time he turned back his wrath and did not suffer his whole displeasure to be roused. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes by and does not return. I think those words could be prophetic if we allow them to be. If we allow them to be. So we come on to our scripture reading. Pauline's going to read it. It's uh, from uh, the book of Acts again. And we're going to read it from the message of the contemporary Christian uh, interpretation of the Bible. Uh, And just picking up the story... uh, at the beginning of uh, chapter 4, the, it's the beginning of the Christian church. And Peter has been um, with some fellow Christians and talked to the uh, crowds in Jerusalem. And for doing that, he was brought before the uh, Council of Jerusalem, uh, the um, Sanhedrin. And uh, they released him. Well, they, I think they put him in jail first, then they released him. So Pauline's now going to carry on the story from when he came out of uh, prison and met with other believers. So let's listen to what uh, Paul has to say in Acts. This is Acts 4, starting at verse 32, and it's from the Message Translation. The whole congregation of believers was, was united as one, one heart, one mind. They didn't even claim ownership of their own possessions. No one said, that's mine, you can't have it. They shared everything. The apostles gave powerful witness to the resurrection of the Master Jesus, and grace was on all of them. And so it turned out that not a person among them was needy. Those who owned fields or houses sold them and brought the price of the sale to the apostles and made an offering of it. The apostles then distributed it according to each person's need. Joseph, called by the apostles Barnabas, which means son of comfort, a Levite born in Cyprus, sold a field that he owned, brought the money and made an offering of it to the apostles. But a man named Ananias and his wife Sapphira, conniving in this with him, sold a piece of land, secretly kept part of the price for himself and then brought the rest to the apostles and made an offering of it. Peter said, Ananias, how did Satan get you to lie to the Holy Spirit and secretly keep back part of the price of the field? Before you sold it, it was all yours, and after you sold it, the money was yours to do with as you wished. So what got into you to pull a trick like this? You didn't lie to men, but to God. Ananias, when he heard those words, fell down dead. That put the fear of God into everyone who heard of it. The younger men went right to work and wrapped him up and then carried him out and buried him. Not more than three hours later, his wife, knowing nothing of what had happened, came in. Peter said, Tell me, were you given this price for your field? Yes, she said, that price. Peter responded, What's going on here that you connived to conspire against the spirit of the master? The men who buried your husband are at the door, and you are next. No sooner were the words out of his mouth that she also fell down dead. When the young men returned, they found her body. They carried her out and buried her beside her husband. By this time, the whole church, and in fact everyone who heard of these things, had a healthy respect for God. They knew God was not to be trifled with. Amen to that. So there we have it. 
Um, that's the early Christian church and what a movement that must have been. You know, we know that they've perhaps, well, I think the Bible says 5,000 at one time were converted, uh, but they were in such a, a, a mood, uh, you know, to follow uh, Christ, even though he, he died and had risen again, but uh, they just couldn't do enough, uh, so much so that they shared their possessions, everything they had. Mm, that's a big, you know, they big shared one. it with others. Mm. So this is what Brother Samuel has to say. We're given a picture in these verses, not so much of a, a proto-communist state, as of the deep bonds of love and responsibility that members of the early church felt towards each other because of their fellowship in Christ. A sense of the common good is integral to the life of God's kingdom and has been emphasised whenever the church does experience renewal in the spirit. This sense of obligation to the community accounts for the harsh judgment given against Ananias and Sapphira, who retained part of the proceeds of their property sold it for the purposes of distribution. Now, it wasn't just the money held back that was the problem, it was also the carefully calculated handover of what was given, i.e. they didn't give it all, they kept some back for themselves. Disguised as generosity, that seems to have offended their fellow Christians. God's economy of gift, though he was rich, yet for the sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. <clears throat> Calls for an open-hearted and an open-handed response to deny that and to seek instead a limited liability to the common good is itself a form of death. Quite a thoughtful response, mm. that a deep response. What he's saying is Ananias and Sophia died through not obeying God, had a sudden death. Uh, and in a way, you know, we die, not literally, spiritually, but spiritually, spiritually uh, when, we yeah, when we hold back. And the same as in our worship time, you know, to give everything. Mm -hmm. We give so that we can receive, like the food bank. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but thinking about that story, when we give to the food bank, <laughs> we don't give absolutely everything that we own. No, we? no. All our food. Yeah. Well, I don't think, I don't think well, they'd have done that. They'd have, they would, you know, they wouldn't have, uh, well, like... they gave all they got. Yeah, otherwise. they wouldn't have starved themselves. But no, it, because it, they would have, it would have been shared and they would have received some. Yeah, yeah. It's a, certainly food for thought. That, that's a good that's pun, a good is one. that? <laughs> Talking about the food bank, yeah. <laughs> so we come on to uh, the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands that all that hate us, and to show mercy to our ancestors, to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And Pauline's going to uh, bring us to, uh, the intercessions, and I'd like to uh, just quote that. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, 
this bit to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. Perhaps that's where you are today, in darkness. You may be grieving a, a lost loved one. And we hold you in our prayers at this time. Well, I'm using the prayer book again for this season of the virus. <laughs> and I've chosen three prayers from it. I've got one for the general prayer for the um, about the outbreak of the virus and for those who are ill and then one for the Christian community. So shall we pray? Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain us and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now a prayer for those who are ill. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain. Perhaps we might name people in our hearts who we know. knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them. Restore them to health and strength. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now a, a prayer for the Christian community. We are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbours' safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving, wherever we are and whatever it costs, for as long as it takes and wherever you call us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We'd just like to pray for the those that do dwell in darkness, uh, perhaps suffering from depression or just feeling low, especially at this time of, uh, I know the lockdown being eased, but for some um, they're still uh, perhaps shielding, not uh, wanting to go out. Uh, but Lord, that you'd be with them at this time. And also those that are grieving lost loved ones. Father, that you would comfort them and strengthen them. And be with them. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Yeah. So the collect for today. Today, we, uh, I've just remembered, uh, we commemorate uh, the founders of uh, the Salvation Army, William Booth and his sister Catherine, uh, who were uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. So we remember that Salvation Army does such a fantastic job among uh, the poor and deprived, uh, not just in this country, but all over the world. So we just remember them in our prayers as well. So the collect for today. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom, defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in life eternal. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you everybody for joining us and tomorrow hopefully we'll be in a different location entirely. We're going to be praying in someone's garden and you've got to guess which garden it is. <laughs> <laughs>